How do you feel personally when you hear that another firefighter has cancer? <clears throat> it's devastating. Job-related cancer is likely the number one thing on firefighters' minds other than the job itself right now. There is no doubt about it. It is an epidemic amongst our ranks. I was at the Fallen Firefighter Memorial. In Colorado Springs, we go every year to honor our brothers and sisters who have died in the line of duty. And for about two to three days prior to the event, I was having pain in my kind of mid to lower back. And then by the Friday, the day before the event, my pain from my lower back had moved from my back down into my groin. And so I was taking a shower when I found a lump. And one of my very deep close friends uh, who I've known since Little League, we sat together at the event and we we're sitting there and I kind of leaned over to him and I said, Chad, I, I found a lump today. I'm scared. And so I, I returned on uh, Sunday and went to the doctor on Monday. And that's when I found out I, had, I was in big trouble. And the doc says, Brian, you have a chance. He said, but I'm going to have to just about kill you with chemo if you're going to make it. And so I had to go five hours a day, five days a week for chemo. for 100 days. I consider it the perfect storm. So firefighters are exposed to multiple different environmental toxins through diesel exhaust and then on the different fires. They're sleep deprived and then there's stress. And so combining all of those factors together, no matter how fit and everything you do, it's very hard to combat the effects of those. So all firefighters should be screened. And so just depending on your risk factors and just be depending on what I find is the frequency. So if you have a normal exam, I follow you every three years for a whole body MRI and every two years for the low dose lung CT. Skin exams, I recommend yearly. Prostate exams, if you're 40 and it's normal, probably every two years if we find something abnormal or something that's six months. So just depending on what we find is the frequency. We started our cancer center in 2017 with my partner, Dr. Pablo Pritchard. And when we started it, we wanted to be different and do a community project. And I happened to be reading about 9-11 and the cancers that the first responders were getting. And I thought, well, I can do this in Arizona. So I called my dear friend, Michael Peterson in Corvaya, who works for Councilwoman Laura Pastor. And I told him my interest. And so we started this free cancer screening. And it was mostly lung CTs, some colonoscopies, skin exams, just basics. But fire trucks from all over were driving to come to see me. Three or four weeks into it, I found a really rare cancer in a young Chandler firefighter. And that changed it for me because this man is a picture of health. He's 42 years old, ultra athlete, and it's a really rare cancer. And we found it at stage one and it changed everything for him. Then it just spiraled out of there and more and more firefighters and more and more cancers. And now we're up to 170 cancers. I'm usually the first person that gets the phone call for somebody that has cancer. And I sit down with them and uh, do a detailed uh, overview of uh, the benefits available, uh, the support that they're going to be provided. And we assist them with doing all the legwork and gathering information, taking care of documents, uh, because we want the member as well as the spouse to concentrate on that member's um, mental health and their cancer care and treatment. I was doing what I thought was a routine scan um, that was offered. Thought I was just getting another check mark. Hey, you're good. And I get a call and I was in a grocery store picking up bread for my son. That I just remember the lady, young lady saying, and we've seen something.
samples know what kind of cancer did you have? Non Hodgkin's lymphoma. Tell me about what led up to you finding out uh, you were in remission. When did you get that news and how did you feel? There was this past spring and uh, I can just remember, you know, Dr. Shuka and, you know, her being, you know, excited and I just remember you're good. And I don't know if I heard anything else, you know. Put off going to Vincere uh, Cancer Center for, gosh, the whole time basically. So maybe four years put it off. I, for me, I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. Don't have any issues with absolutely anything. Eat healthy, not much of a drinker. Went in, do the scans, do the, all the blood work. I did genetic testing. When you get that phone call, We did a second CT the next day, uh, showed the tumors on the outside of the kidney. It hasn't even went really inside the kidney, it's just attached itself to the outside. Renal cell carcinoma is what they called it. I think the whole situation makes you feel vulnerable. You live a healthy life, um, and then all of a sudden you have something that can make you sick. An individual who is suddenly diagnosed with cancer, whether they're young or they're old, unexpected, it's life-changing. They go through a series of psychological effects that most of them have never been familiar with either. So they're not just struggling with the treatment, the modalities and all the, the chemotherapies and radiation and surgeries that they get from infections but they're also dealing with a, a psychological component because they have to face mortality. Whether they're deemed terminal or not, it's in the back of their mind. Is it going to spread? Will it metastasize? All these different effects have a massive effect on their personal well-being, psychologically, as well as their family. So we're not just taking care of the firefighter who has cancer, we're taking care of the wife and the kids and the family, all of the people that have to come together and care for them in their home when they never thought that that would happen at that age. I was 36. I had been on the job for 16 years. I did not do any of the pre-cancer screenings. I figured I lived healthy. I noticed a lump under my chin and it didn't go away. They did an ultrasound. I remember being in Disneyland um, in line at the ride when the ultrasound came back and it's and it said you know need further tests so called uh, Vincere December 22nd and I was in their office December 23rd um, Dr. Shukla had me getting scanned within about 10 minutes of meeting her on the fire department I've always thought I've done a good job I've always taken pride in treating people well and I haven't even come close to how good Dr. Shukla and Vincere I mean she just put care and, and people and, and being a good person on a whole nother level. So ultimately I was diagnosed January 3rd with uh, stage three non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Um, I had tumors in my neck, chest, stomach, groin and armpit. And Dr. Shukla connected me with um, a woman out of Mayo, Dr. Allison Rosenthal, who is also a cancer survivor herself. And she treated me uh, Mayo with uh, kind of a new treatment, less invasive, and by April 1st, I was cancer-free, and currently am cancer-free. Now, the, the caveat is mine's not curable, so it's more of a how long is it gonna be till it comes back. So I had a, a rapid enlargement of one of my testicles. Um, and I thought it was related to an injury. And so after just a couple of days, I went ahead and just made an appointment to get it evaluated. It was so off my radar that it was anything but an injury that I actually forgot my telehealth 
uh, appointment with him for the follow-up results. I get a text, your doctor is waiting for you in the virtual waiting room. The doctor said, so the results came back as a mass and not fluid. It's more than likely cancer and needs to come out as soon as possible. Put the girls to bed and then I broke down with my wife. Um, that sort of a, was, was a surreal night of, you know, the bedtimes and everything else because in my mind it was, it was like one of the last times that I might be doing that. That was the truly traumatic part for me was just considering not being there to do that stuff again. I just had my three-year scan and I have had zero uh, tumors since then. Um, my prognosis is good. I haven't, I'm not technically cured, but yeah, clear of cancer at this point. So I started the process with Vincere I had done the blood work, blood work came back good. And then I went for a scan and, and I looked in my portal and I seen that they found a mass on my left kidney. I knew what it, what, what it was gonna turn out to be because um, it said uh, consistent with renal cell carcinoma. I had surgery on January 4th of this year. They took about half of my left kidney and um, I just had scans a few weeks ago and everything was clear. Dr. Shukla, I have not met a doctor like her. Take advantage of uh, the Vincere um, Center that offers all this stuff to us. You gotta be smart. I was celebrating my 25th anniversary on the fire department in 2017 in March. And a couple days after that celebration, uh, I developed a tumor under my left underarm that was about the size of uh, half of a baseball. It just kind of came up overnight. I had something in my lymph system, and that's when I went in to, to get checked. It went from uh, being healthy my whole life, never taking a medication my whole life, never been admitted to the hospital for anything my whole life, or injured or surgeries, nothing, to uh, him saying it's definitely cancer. Uh, we just have to figure out what kind it is. The report came back that I had a really rare cancer that we need to start treatment right away. I was given six months to live when I was diagnosed. I went through four rounds of platinum-based chemotherapy and 40 rounds of radiation therapy. And that's when I was towards the end of, um, I wasn't getting better, it wasn't working. I went in on a Monday, I told my wife on a Friday that we had an appointment Monday. I said, when we go on Monday, I'm gonna tell my doctor that I'm not gonna do any more treatment, that I'm gonna try and get healthy and strong and, and enjoy my last time. I luckily, because of this amazing doctor, walked in on a Monday morning. They said the university had called and I was going to be the first person to receive a new immunotherapy that they'd have some luck in trials on for my exact cancer match. And that would be the first person to receive it and if I wanted to do it. And I said, yes, I've always wanted to do an immunotherapy. Within three months of treatment of immunotherapy, every two weeks, my cancer was almost completely gone. I had a one tiny bit of cancer left about the size of a dime on my scan. And my next scan, I was completely cancer free. Tommy, he had been ill for a little bit, just not feeling well. He was in a lot of pain abdominally. Um, and so finally what kind of did it, he was um, working, of course, on the fire, miserable, um, in so much pain. And so actually his crew was like, you, ha you have to go home. So they drove him home, um, someone drove his truck home, and then I drove him immediately to the hospital. He was diagnosed with stage four colorectal cancer. I was definitely in shock. Um, and Tommy immediately just broke down. You know, that was, the furthest thing from our radar. It's really hard, you know, for him, and it was really hard for me to watch the strong man um, deteriorate. Our world now is very different. Um, he brought so much light and, you know, happiness into our home and the world. Um, so I do feel like the world is a little darker without him. Um, he was a wonderfully dedicated father. And so not having 
his presence here for our girls, I think has to be the hardest. Um, that's the hardest piece to navigate. And especially for me, um, he's all I knew. We met when we were 18. So he was truly my partner in life. And so navigating the loss of my partner and the loss of our daughter's, you know, dad, um, it's incredibly painful and it's still something that we're trying to get some footing under, you know, even three years later. Yeah. I have a total of nine family members that have been on the fire department in the past, over 200 years of service. My son is Brian John Beck II, named after me. And of course, growing up, he wants to be the next firefighter. He came on about five years before I retired. And then three years later, he came to my station I worked at. And so for my last two years on the fire department, we both worked at station 33 at I-17 at Cactus and had the time of our lives. Because like I say, every fireman's dream is to have their son on the fire department with them. And I got to work with him for two years. I retired. I went to, uh, we met at my son's house for a, re a baby reveal who turns out to be Brian John Beck III. And after we did the reveal, I thought I was gonna be a boy. My son told us that he was tested positive for melanoma. I took him to most of his appointments, but my daughter-in-law could stay home with the kids. My son at the time had a four-year-old daughter, a two-year-old daughter, a six-month-old baby when he passed away. The saddest thing to watch him just suffer and kind of miss those kids. I miss him more than anything. He was my best friend. <laughs>